Aloha, malo lele, a very warm welcome to the Pacific Way. In the Pacific, ecosystems are the lifeline of island economies and community well-being. Tonight, journey with us to Kiribati to find out how the government's Whole of Island initiative is supporting communities to not only better manage their surrounding ecosystems, but also strengthen community resilience to the impacts of climate change. In a remote corner of the Pacific, a string of small atoll islands barely break the surface of the vast blue. This is the Republic of Kiribati. It's made up of 99% ocean, an expanse that rivals that of the continental United States. When it comes to the impacts of climate variability and climate change, Kiribati ranks among the most vulnerable in the world. On Abayang, as with all of Kiribati's atoll islands, climate change leads to increasing air and sea surface temperatures, increasing ocean acidification, more rainfall, but with climate variability also leading to more periods of droughts and extreme rainfall. This impacts negatively on the productivity of coastal fisheries and agriculture and during periods of drought, the availability of adequate and safe drinking water. Sea level rise contributes to severe coastal erosion in some places. In 2011, the government of Kiribati requested new climate change programs to support outer island communities to adapt to the adverse impacts of climatic changes and variability and to strengthen the island's response capacities to human-induced and natural hazards through a holistic integrated approach. Instead of focusing on selected villages or single sectors, the whole of island approach targets the whole island ecosystem, communities and governance structures whilst considering its linkages with the national government and partners. The government of Kiribati is working towards moving beyond project-by-project project approaches towards a better coordinated and programmatic approach for the benefit of the Kiribati people. This initiative is known as the Whole of Island Approach and it is being piloted in Abayang, an atoll located north of the capital, Tarawa. The coordination and implementation is supported by the Kiribati National Expert Group on Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management, KNEG. KNEG, made up of representatives from various ministries, non-governmental organizations, faith-based groups and the private sector, is the technical advisory board to the national government on climate change and disaster risk management. Part of KNEG's agenda today is to discuss preparations for a multi-sectoral mission to Abayang. We've seen that in, in, in the past projects have uh, come and they've, they've tried to, to, uh, to address maybe issues uh, relating to whichever sector, water, agriculture, you know, and, and they've, they've kind of been scattered around uh, Kiribati. So this whole of island approach, mainly what it does is uh, gather all these projects or maybe these activities under one whole approach and then implement them fully on the one outer island first and then moving on to the next. Uh, as of now, the cabinet has selected two, two pilot islands, which are Abeyang and uh, Tab North, Tab Dewea Meang. And uh, uh, so far, Abeyang has seen um, planning and implementation.
The whole of Island team heading to Abayang includes representatives from various ministries, including education, environment, lands and agricultural development, fisheries and marine resources, public works and utilities, as well as a Kiribati meteorological service. The journey takes just over two hours. On hand to welcome the team are members of the Island Council and Unimane, respected elders in Nabayang. These picturesque low-lying shores have a population of just over 5,000. Tradition is very much alive here, and so too the hospitality of its people. With formalities and festivities complete, implementation work across the atoll can begin. Life on the atolls depends solely on the lagoons, reefs, oceans and its resources. It has shaped culture, lifestyle and how people have adapted in order to survive. The whole of island approach enhances management through fisheries scientific assessments. Alternatives to fisheries management, as with the deployment of fish aggregating devices, FADS. Aquaculture trials for resilient commodities, post-harvest and development of Island Council fisheries bylaws. Through scientific assessments, Marine Protected Areas, MPAs, will be established and stringent control on fishing gear and seasons will be enforced by the island councils. In Swarup village, work begins early. Here, SPC is supporting the Ministry of Environment, Lands and Agricultural Development with the implementation of a USAID-funded project that aims to enhance climate change resilience of land-based food production systems. It's quite very common in the villages is that uh, there's a very high dependency on uh, those imported foods. Because of these uh, uh, dependency problems, uh, people tend to forget to, you know, to ignore their own uh, traditional foods and and they actually like if we look at some of the families they have land but uh, you know they didn't actually uh, that land is not really fully uh, cropped. Swarup is one of three villages selected by the Abayang Island Council for this agricultural initiative. The demonstration site will be divided into three a nursery, a piggery, and this section is being marked out for agroforestry activities. We also brought from the water uh, NFT, nitrogen uh, fixing trees. The soil is not good also in Kiribati or the, the, the islands, but we're going to do as a uh, composting for planting our uh, uh, bread food and others. Once completed, this structure will house a breeding, multiplication and distribution center for pigs. It will serve as a breeding and selection site for the conservation of local pigs, as well as for crossbreeding between local and exotic breeds brought in from Tarawa, in order to identify climate resilient and adapted pigs for farmers to raise. The reason we're bringing these breeds here is to let them firstly to mass produce these breeds here. And um, from these piglets, they, they can use them to, um, they can raise them and um, do crossbreeding. 
in order to, with their local breeds, in order to produce better breeds. The nursery aims to increase production and diversify vegetables and crops on the island. Planting material raised in the nursery will be used for demonstration farms as a means of increasing communities' awareness on sustainable atoll agriculture. It will also be used for distribution to households to address basic dietary needs. I think we take the uh, sweet potatoes and cassava and plenty of vegetable seed that we have in our hands. Yeah? And some of them we we just uh, ordered from the, from the SPC and we try to mass produce that kind of, uh, of, of seedlings. As we see now that most of the trees here, they are not bearing fruit. And we know that the climate change uh, affects our plants and we should uh, make the awareness to the people. Uh, they should do something for their plants. We try to encourage them not to bend their uh, organic matters at <laughs> especially in the bush, and we try to tell them that uh, a lot of good nutrients in that organic materials do not burn. Just mix it and for the compost, and you can improve your soil. Local ownership is vital for sustainability. If properly managed, it will not only address the food security needs of the over 700 people who live here, but it could also serve as an important source of income for the community who can sell surplus vegetables and crops to South Tarawa. Nora <laughs> There are 12 projects funded by numerous donors being implemented under the whole of island approach. Each initiative, including the one in Swarup, is being guided by the Abayang Island Council Strategic Action Plan 2014 to 2017. My special thank to the Excellency the Palestinians and another town, and also with their cabinets, uh, to select uh, ma, the island of Payang to 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 going to do the all island approach, and I'm say on behalf of the people of Payang to the Excellency another town with his cabinets. Thank you very much for your supporting and you're looking after a young island. The Abayang Island Council's strategic plan um, works towards a vision statement, which is Abayang, land of progress today for a sustainable future. That plan has now been endorsed unanimously by the council, uh, and that also feeds into an action plan for all of the projects that are working here. So in that way, uh, the, the island can have a lot of ownership and input into the projects taking place here. Water is the lifeline of any community, and Abayang Atoll is fortunate to have an underground fresh water lens. 
But changing climatic conditions and increased demand and supply place enormous strain on what is a very limited resource. It is a place where there's serious issues in regards to contaminated water supply and also shortage during times of drought. The first step is to find out the extent of water contamination across the atoll. The National Project Coordinator, Water Engineering Unit and SPREP have carried out a number of water assessments on household wells and rainwater tanks for selected villages. We find out from previous testing that um, Abayang is quite uh, lucky that because it gets um, a lot of rain, rainfall being the the island in one of the island in the north and and so most of the wells that are visited are, are quite fresh you know however there there are a lot of the wells or most of the wells that are tested before are you know contaminated with bacteria and that's because most of the wells are open interestingly the wells that are covered fully covered and you know with fully submerged on the ground you know and, and connected to the end pumps they have very little or no bacteria at all. Approximately 40 wells were tested in each village. The results will determine how many tamana pumps or hand pumps will be installed in the villages selected under this project. We've basically selected all of the wells that are that are going to be, you know, that are going to have tamana pumps and we've tested for bacteria and salinity as well. If people have better water, you know, they will have better chance of um, healthier life and they, you know, they will maybe for the children and the, the, the women who spend a lot of time collecting water, they'll, they, you know, they, they will not, they will have more time to do other, you know, activities at home and on the overall, I think it will increase the overall um, economic activity of the people on the Bayang if they have, you know, um, safe, accessible water at their homes. Yeah. Understanding the changes taking place is important not only for today, but also for the future. In two locations on Abayang, 55 teachers are learning how to use an innovative teaching resource called Learning About Climate Change the Pacific Way. This regional climate change toolkit was developed in collaboration with the SPCGIZ, SPREP, Australian Government, USAID and other international agencies. We trained uh, curriculum developers and, uh, and uh, curriculum writers on the new resource, uh, how to use the new resource. And um, we also conduct trainings with, uh, with uh, national teacher training institutions. Uh, lecturers of uh, Kiribati Teachers College and from, them, uh, from that onwards uh, the, they themselves, members of the CDRC uh, and also KTC were here with us uh, conducting training. So they are the ones who are training the teachers on the new resource. It's totally interactive. It's 16 pictures, 16 chapters but it's not intended that a teacher is ever going to start at chapter one and work their way through. It's deliberately designed with the pictures to be used across subjects at any stages and all the teaching activities are there with ideas about you could do it this way, you know, talking and oral with your primary students or you could extend it this way for your senior students. The hands-on activities that we did during the workshop like modelling the, the impact of uh, warm water on the surface of the sea. We modeled that to the teachers and from that modeling then they, they what they tend to uh, have a, a more sound knowledge of what will happen if the, the water surface of the ocean is expanding and that's related 
related to the increase in sea level rise, it will be very useful because after this, we'll, we, we are going to develop a, a, a training manual for the teachers across Kiribati that focuses on teaching climate change the specific way. We look forward to apply the teaching strategies and to also use and utilize the, the resource materials in particular to, to our students, especially in the subject area of geography and maths and, and science and then the other uh, subject as well. You can have a lot of uh, uh, interaction by students. They can be able to write paragraphs and so it will also improve their, their writings and their, their English communication especially. The Kiribati Meteorological Service, working in partnership with SPCGIZ and SPREP, also installed weather stations in three schools on Abayam. I think it's also important for the students to have uh, practically uh, take part in the, in the weather monitoring. Uh, we hope, for, from, my, from the METS uh, perspective, I think uh, when the students are be part of the monitoring, I think they can be more understand and know uh, at the early stage what, what are the factors and the issues that Kiribati is facing in related to climate change. A popular addition to the school compounds, these weather stations will complement the establishment of the main weather station at the Abayang Island Council office. Abayang lack of is the data, the meteorological data. So when we get the data, the, the, the real-time data uh, information on weather, Abayang could be also one of the islands that could be provided with a lot of uh, uh, analysis or product from the, the Kiribati Meteorological Service. And one of it is the, the, the seasonal climate outlook, which I hope can assist Abayang in terms of planning, uh, in terms of uh, issues related with the water, uh, such as drought, uh, uh, not only that, but in terms of any severe events, uh, severe weather events, when happening, we, we can also take uh, Bayang data as one of the, the reference uh, in, in verifying the, the information on those kind of uh, uh, in severe weather uh, events. Abayang has its fair share of daily challenges, but it's taking bold steps to address them. The atoll is committed to becoming fully organic, and has devised innovative ways of promoting income generation organic products and youth involvement by integrating sport and agriculture. Perhaps most importantly, however, the people of Abayang are being empowered with the knowledge and tools to adapt to the changes around them. And in turn, they've become a shining example to the rest of the Pacific on how the whole of island approach can inform climate change adaptation programs in the future. It's time for us to leave, but before we go, if you'd like to know more about the Pacific Way or about any of our stories, remember you can also find us on Facebook and on YouTube. Until next time, au revoir, kakite anō.